One time, one time, one time Hey, throw your hands to the sky tonight Cause I think I see the baddest little thing in the world right What is good, YouTube? This your boy, Aaron It's Brian And, and we, we coming from the trap today We coming from the trap You live from the crib version mm -hmm. of the uh, podcast today Yes, sir, we'll be back in Precautionary the measures We'll be back in the studio next week, so uh, this is only temporary. But, um, yeah, this is episode 20 of the Courtside View Podcast. How you feeling, Brian? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. You know, training camp kicked off, seeing a lot of footage on the timeline and things of that nature. So, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely some training camp, man. I saw uh, one, of you, one of the Cowboys receivers. Uh, I don't know what cornerback was guarding him. I don't know the re receiver's name, but he made, like, a spectacular catch. I was like, damn. It's pretty nice. I wish it was too bad it wasn't CD, though. It was pretty nice, though. Don't know the receiver's name, but. Probably talking about TJ Vasher. Yeah. Like the clip that was flying around uh, yesterday or the day before. You want to say? Yep, yeah. pretty much. And, so. it was my, and it was over my dog that I've been vouching for since uh, the last year's draft, uh, Kelvin Joseph. Kelvin? So, I mean, no matter what, you can't guard that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so um, Vash is like six four. So. Well, we'll get to the we'll get to the Cowboys, you know, later on today. But right now, I want to talk about sort of what has been in a headline for like the past few days, uh, and it's Kyler Murray. For some just reason itself, his contract right, and he signed a new contract. He became the highest. Uh, paid quarterback in the NFL, highest played player in the NFL, actually. And so in the con – why why you, you say sure? that? I, you I sure? swear. I thought he got uh, paid the most money. Uh, uh, I, don't, I, thought, I thought he got paid not most – I don't think he got paid the most guaranteed money, but I believe uh, – um, yeah, he didn't get – I think Deshaun Watson has the most guaranteed money. He yeah. fully guaranteed. But, Kyler, um, if, if he were to – fulfill all his obligations and everything like that. He would be the highest paid. So, uh, but in the contract, there was sort of this controversy about, he had to like watch like four hours of film. I believe it was because people, because I believe the Cardinals, um, they uh, didn't think that he was like really like watching like a whole lot of film or something. There was sort of that whole propaganda about, Oh, you know, he doesn't really study film a whole lot. And, Kyler Murray in training camp, he went on the podium. He sort of like talked about it a little bit and addressing it and how uh, that's ridiculous and him sort of being on that level. He has to watch film, especially in his size and everything. So how did you feel about just the Cardinals putting that in his contract? And then they also took it away after just people sort of uh, criticizing them about it. So just talk about that. How you feel? This guy. If if he was watching film as he said he would, there would be no reason to put it in the contract anyway. That just that just doesn't make sense. And why would that even be? Why would the Cardinals or publicly humiliate the QB one anyway by even announcing or leaking that that was in the contract anyway? So it really don't make sense to me. But. You know, Kyler, he made him take it out. He he said, he said, y'all about to embarrass me? No way. And he said, we gonna, we gonna get, I'm going to go to the media. I'm going to go to the press. We're going to get this handled. I mean, and, and the Cardinals ain't stand on business, so. Yeah, they retracted everything. I was like, wow. Yeah. I was like, they a bunch of chumps. They a bunch of, they scared out here. They scared about, they scared about all the criticism. I'm like, why did you put it in there in the first place? If, if you're going to retract your statements about Kyler Murray. Now, I get it. What Kyler Murray said. But wait, but wait. On the other hand, though, why did Kyler sign the contract if that was an issue? Mm, that's a good question. Oh. Hmm. What, what, why, why, would they, why would they do that? Why would they do that? You know, I don't. That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe because. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Was he mad because it got I think he was mad because it just got out. I think if if there wasn't if if it didn't go out, if the information about his contract details didn't come out, I feel like none of this would be even a story. But considering that it got leaked, 
then I feel like that's where he got angry because people are questioning his sort of work ethic and everything like that. And when you question a professional athlete's work ethic, that's whew, that's a that's a big deal. That's a big deal because money's involved, uh, livelihoods are involved. So I think that's why um, things got out of hand and um, they eventually just got rid of it. But uh, I think Kyler Murray was like, it's like it's one of those things where you watch four hours of film. I feel like as a quarterback, that should be second nature. The baseline. Yeah, that should be second nature. So I just feel like him sort of seeing that in a contract, I think he just, I don't know. I don't know why he, he, he should have felt a way about it. I don't know why he didn't think that um, he waited until after it came out. Uh, it's like when you're watching film as a quarterback, that's, that should be like somebody that's brushing their teeth every day. Like, oh, yeah, like, of course you're going to brush your teeth every day. You know, it's, it's section nature. So I don't, that's a great question. That's a, why? Why didn't he feel some type of way um, until after it came out? That's that's a great question. I don't know. But uh, do you feel like, because last year, Kyler Murray, I think he spoke about spoke about how um, he wasn't going to like spend 24 hours um, every day watching film and everything like that. He talked about just his um, his way of sort of. Um, I guess you could say studying the game is not the traditional sense that we believe the all-time greats like a Tom Brady, a Peyton Manning would study a game. We think they're studying the game day and night, all day, um, 24 hours, you know what I'm saying? Spending 10,000 hours studying film. Uh, Kyler Murray pretty much said that, yo, I, I do it a little differently. And I guess there was some backlash about it. And maybe the Cardinals know something we don't. I don't know exactly. We we sort of talked about it. Um, I think it was maybe last week or two weeks ago when we were talking about sort of Dak Prescott. Me and you were debating Dak Prescott being in the top ten, and um, we brought up Kyler Murray. And um, I think we said something about Kyler Murray's sort of attitude. You brought up his attitude on the field and everything like that. Yep. So, so maybe that could be part of it. Maybe it's his prof maybe the Cardinals just don't like his professionalism. Maybe there's something, again, there's something we don't know. Uh, he has been somebody that uh, on the field has not had the, the greatest body language. Uh, maybe his leadership isn't the greatest. Maybe again, his, um, his work ethic, when you watch him on the field, it, it definitely seems like at times he's confused especially the second half of the season. So who knows? I can't really say definitively. The only people that really know is Kyler and the Cardinals organization and maybe some of the Cardinals players, and they're going to keep that under wrap. But, uh, yeah, Patrick Mahomes sort of spoke about it a little bit and how um, him, Lamar Jackson, and Kyler Murray have to continuously prove themselves because uh, – Sometimes you'll hear like maybe uh, front office people or former players sort of question like Patrick Mahomes' uh, decision making, um, uh, thinking that he um, is not the great greatest when it comes to uh, hmm, he he's a gunslinger. Let's just he's just a gunslinger and a guy that uh, he's not the most traditional style of quarterback. You know what I mean? And so I feel like. Patrick Mahomes, I don't know. I don't know if I say Patrick Mahomes has to constantly prove himself because he's always uh, – people always regard him as, like, top two, number one in the NFL. But I understand what he's saying. So, yeah. Um, another player – I'm, I'm trying to look for the uh, picture I want to use. Over what? For, for what Pat Mahomes said, but you can keep going. Oh, you're talking about the quote? Yeah, it's on, I know it's on Twitter. I saw it on Twitter. Um, if you just search up Patrick Mahomes, you're going to see it right there. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the. Uh, is it a meme? Yeah. Oh, where he's, wait, he, what is he like? Throw it's like the meme where he's like, throw it up to uh, Tyreek Hill. He'd be somewhere, some, something like that. I don't know. No, no, no. He see if you went because Pat Mahomes was like he he always got a um 
you know, have to be criticized as to prove himself. But it's just kind of ironic because Pat Mahomes had one of the worst second halves I've ever seen in a playoff game against the Bengals. Ooh. And then and then he died. He caught maybe he caught some flack for what a day, if that. And then everyone put him in his top three still. So I'm not trying to hear Pat Mahomes be like, oh, we got to keep. What you mean, we? <laughs> everyone still regards you as a top three QB. I'm confused here. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm confused. I'm confused as well. I mean, I get the whole black QB element. I understand because you don't really hear that a whole lot about the white quarterbacks in terms of uh, people questioning their um, cerebralness from the, uh, the pocket, um, questioning sort of how they um, are, you know, how their ability under center. So I understand that, uh, especially like Josh Allen and um, other guys like that, other young white quarterbacks. So I can see what he's saying there, but Patrick Mahomes is still regarded as like one of the three best quarterbacks. A lot of people still have him as the best quarterback. So that, yeah, but I'm not going to just, I'm not going to like 100% disregard his statement because he's sort of addressing the black quarterback and he is a black QB. I understand he's half white as well, but he's still a black QB. So <laughs> let's not, let's not just uh, disregard his statement. But uh, another, he was missing another QB on that list too, but I ain't going to get into that. Oh, Russell Wilson. I think pretty much all the NFL community gives Russell Wilson the due respect. But it's another QB, one that he might have played in the playoffs that that still gets left out of these discussions. Oh, here we go. Nah, we're not even going to bring him up. We're not even going to bring him up. Ah, uh, no. He, he's, he's good where he's at. He's good where he's at. Top two, right. that's fine with me. Nah, I don't know about that. Um, but anywho, um, there was another player that sort of had uh, – that came out. It was like a contract sort of situation that sort of got leaked as well, and that's Zion Williamson. Now, this one I can agree with because Zion Williamson, he hasn't played a whole lot of games the past two years. He's been in the league. So Zion Williamson, uh, they, there was a report out there that um, in his new contract that if he doesn't – if he's over like 295, whatever, he's not going to get all his guaranteed money. I like that idea because Zion Williamson has been overweight. He just look at his college and the first year photos, um, his rookie year with the Pelicans, and compare it to where he was his second year and his third year. And it's just totally different. Like it's ridiculously crazy just how much he has just gained weight and just been out of shape and just the injuries itself. So I like what the Pelicans did there, sort of making him take accountability for himself. And you're going to give him all that money. You need to also have uh, security that he is going to put in the work, put in the time to make sure that he gets on the court in the best shape possible. How do you feel about what the Pelicans uh, did with uh, Zion Williamson's contract? Hey, they protecting their backside. Shoot, give him all that money. He show up overweight to camp. That ain't no good. So they they trying to keep him, hold him accountable. I'm all about accountability for these athletes. So they telling him, I know, I think it's like, like if he's like 270 something, he has to have no more than 20% body fat or something like that. And if he's like 285, he has to have less than 10% body fat. I don't know how that's going to work, but like it's just ridiculous that you have to ask a professional athlete who's already undersized height wise to not show up near th nearly 300 pounds. Like he's not Shaq. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Maybe it's just his genetics. Is just he it can't really allow him to lose that much weight because maybe he, he puts on muscle and weight quickly. You know, whatever. But he, the thing with – see, the thing with these professional athletes is, okay, yeah, we're not professional athletes, so we 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 don't have the credentials to sort of um, come here and say, like, oh, we know what the hell is – you know, we, we understand them. So – but what we will say is that they are making a ton of money. And if you – if you or me was making that much money – you know how easy it would be to to be able to be just to stay disciplined 
you can hire chefs, you can hire nutritionists, you can hire the best trainers that you want in order to stay at the weight that you want to. But Zion, on the other hand, he's just not able to do it. I guess, I don't <laughs> being in New Orleans, that New Orleans cooking, I guess it's just a different breed. It's just hard to do it. I get it. The, um, the beignets are delicious. The beignets are delicious. The, um, I forgot what else they be having on there. Um, the jambalaya is delicious. I understand it. It's good, but dude, you gotta, you gotta sacrifice. Like you just gotta sacrifice. And finally he's sort of getting it. I've seen him in the past few weeks and in, in like videos, whatever, he looks like he's in a tremendous shape. So I like seeing that. Um, but overall, man, you making all that money. There's no excuse. At the end of the day, it's no excuse. So, uh, Remains to be seen. Hopefully, we get to see more Zion. It's just these NBA players are just being coddled too much, especially these young players. Like, when you're coming into the league, there's an expectation that, yo, you're young, you need to play. Like, there's just, there's this expectation that there's no excuse. You need to be playing when you're that young. Like, maybe when you're, like, 33, 32, 31, okay, take some time off. But when you're, like... That young, that inexperienced, still wet behind the ears, you need to be playing all the minutes you can. And just seeing Zion Williamson continuously uh, missing time due to injuries, due to being out of shape, is it's embarrassing. It really is. So I'm glad that the Pelicans took the liberty to um, put that in his contract so that we can finally get more Zion. I like Zion. I like watching him play. I remember his first year. I was so excited seeing him play. And the NBA is better when your young players are playing. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Is there any final takes on sort of Zion contract? Or are you, are you good on that one? I mean, ain't really much to be said. We still got to see the man get on the court first. Yeah, for sure. So we'll see how the Pelicans move. I like Brandon. I like the way they're moving right now. So they definitely have a bright future. So I saw this on, I think it was maybe First Things First, but they were talking about, uh, it was either First Things First or uh, First Take, but they they are talking about tier list. And I think this is a good time to talk about, I would say, NFL QB tier list. Let's go, let's go to that one first. Because we talked about the top 10 right top 10 qbs but now i want to talk about the tier list like a qb tier list right which is like very popular these days and so i would say the first tier we already know those are the qbs that you have them you're automatically in the super bowl contention like it's no question about it the second tier list website pulled up i could i could i could um share my screen and do it right now. What's with all the ads, though? What the heck is going on? But yeah, we're going to do the 32, I think the 32 starting quarterbacks. And we're going to have, I would say, four tiers, right? There is franchise changing. That's number one. Second one is, hmm, who will be the second one? I would say, hmm. What would be the second tier? I would say you can win a Super Bowl with them, but they still need they they still need a couple parts around them. How about that? Uh, third tier would be they can win a playoff. I guess you could say they can win a playoff game, maybe. And then fourth tier would be, you know, they're. Uh, um, I'm looking at a um jump right now it's the tiers are elite great average backup should be out of the league. okay we could do that okay i'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna try to i'm gonna try that, to pull it that up. makes it simple that makes that simplifies things so uh let's go down the list 32 uh so i would say for the elite i think there's about maybe five elite quarterbacks I'm about to I'm about to share my screen so you can see what I'm seeing. Uh, hmm. 
Oh, there you go. I'm slow. I'm just looking for this. Oh, uh, can you enable the screen sharing? Let me see. Let me see if I can do that. I got you. Give me a sec. Try it now. I bet. Right, can you see this? Yes, I can. Yes, sir. That's perfect. Right, so, yeah. so I'm gonna go first because you know you can see the pictures clearly and all of that, right? All right. So we got elite tier, the elite tier QBs. Obviously, we're going for the usuals we got Aaron Rodgers, Mahomes, uh where's Brady? Is this one without Brady on it? Because he retired. Oh well we all know Brady's up there. Brady's on there for sure. Oh yeah. I'm putting Lamar you put Lamar in too. there? Yes. What? Lamar no. is elite. No. Lamar is elite. Yeah, Lamar is elite. You're crazy. Lamar is elite. I don't care. Lamar is not um, elite, bro. And uh, Lamar is not elite, hmm, bro. See, oh yeah, Josh Josh Allen, he's elite. I say Josh Allen is elite. And so far, that is it. Yeah, that's it. I hope I'm not missing Brady because I'm being blind. It's, it's so you're so hilarious, man. You're gonna put how you're gonna put Josh Allen in there, but not Joe Burrow. <laughs> That's Give me hilarious. Josh Allen over Joe, bro. You kidding me? That's that's hilarious. All right, the great tier. See, see, my my elite tier is reserved for top five QBs. I hate. First of all, I hate the wording that they use because I could change Dak, it. If you want to. Dak is not great. Dak is good. Are you drunk? Dak is not great. He's good. He's good. Are you drunk? I'm not. I'm not drunk. He's good. So I don't like the wording on this. I don't like the wording on this. Because I'm not going to call Dak great. Nobody should call Dak great. He's good. He's really good. Learn football, please. That's like, that's like, like in basketball, in basketball, we use the term great, like a great player. When we say great player, that's like top 20. We don't say great player and and the quarterback is like, I don't know, maybe maybe top 80. You're smoking dust. I'm not Anywho. smoking dust. I'm just saying great like QB tiers. the terminology in football is weird. Like this is just ridiculous. Whatever. So put just great. Five. Great QB. I'm putting my man first. I don't care. This is it's not in a specific order. I just wanted to show favoritism. Of course, we got Jay Herbo up there. We got Russell Wilson up there. We got Joe Burrow up here. We got, I think Kyler Murray is a great QB. Uh, no, no, he's definitely not average. He's great. Uh, you know, I'm going to change this to, well, I would put great, then good. Yeah, let me do that. I'm gonna put great good. I'm gonna just change the out of the league to we're gonna put good and then average and the uh, who cares. All right, there we go. All right, so uh, any other ones? Do you do you see anyone that should be on the great tier? Should Matt Stafford be on the great tier? I yeah, I'll put him on. Yeah, because he's better than Dak, so I'll put him on there. I'm I'm not entertaining that. See, um, this guy, okay. See. I think that's everybody. Yeah, that yeah, that's good. Anything. That's everybody. That's everybody. So. All right, now for the good QBs, this is where things you probably disagree with me when I put this dude here. I mean, you could put Kirk Cousins on there. Okay. I don't care. I'm putting Jameis in the good QB tier. I I think he's above <laughs> average. No. Derek Carr for sure is up here. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of youngins, like a lot of rookies and second year players on Matt there. Ryan. Mm. <laughs> oh. mm. 
Yeah. Come on, man. You think Jameis Winston is good, but Matt Ryan is average? <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, I'm 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 trying to okay. I'm gonna go by ability. Fine, I'll put Matt Ryan in the group. He's in the, yeah, I'll say, okay, he's above average. Let's go with that. Um Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it for good. Carson. Lindsay. Jason Hurt. What about Jalen Hurts? Uh, you'll see my <laughs> opinion on Jalen Hurts. Come on, man. Right. Jalen Hurts to me, as a thrower of the football, is very average. You sound like them people that. Oh been no, Tannehill. Tannehill should be on good. Uh, yeah, but oh, it's going to be a lot of averages. Baker average. Uh, um, actually, no, I'm gonna change this to unproven. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm not doing these. Taylor Heineke is just trash. I don't even. I don't even want to put him. Can I make a new tier of trash? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. How do I do that? Can I make a new tier of trash? Uh, add a row. A row. It's just, it's just bad. They're just bad. All right. Yeah, this is more like it. Oh, yeah, Mac Jones, he's he's average. I don't know. Should, should he be in the unproven? He did make the playoffs. He's average. Average, okay. Yeah, average. We'll, this far, we'll see. T right. Law, he's he's unproven. 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 Fitzpatrick, you're you're not getting one. Heineke, you're just bad. Drew Locke is just bad. Carson Wentz is just average. Justin Fields, unproven. Unproven. All of these rookie QBs, I don't if I don't recognize the face you're going in unproven. That's Taysom Hill. You're just bad. Cam Newton, you my dog, but I don't. You're just not good. <laughs> Josh Donald, you're just bad. Yeah. I think golf is average. I think he's better than these guys. Jimmy Garoppolo, you should be here, but you're honestly here. Tua, Tua is average. Oh, okay. What? Okay, go ahead. You think Tua should be good or bad? I feel like he's unproven. Unproven. Yeah, there's still I mean, a lot. Isn't it what is year three he's going into? Okay, all right. I'll give you average. I'll give you average. Is this? That's, oh, that's oh, that's oh, RIP. This, RIP. This, yeah. Has, yeah. Who is this guy? I have no clue. Who that is. Unproven. I don't know that guy. I don't know. Who is nah, Sam? That's, Sam Howell is. Uh, I don't even think he's on this because he got drafted. Daniel Jones. Nah, Sam, Sam Howell is a dude with, with the um. The light blue, I think. Yeah, shirt. that's him. Yeah, with the with the with the commanders. Yeah, I think Zach Wilson unproven. unproven. Easy. I think he'll take. I think he'll take the biggest leap out of all of these guys. Though, okay. don't know who this guy is. I have no clue. I mean, since I don't know who he's, I'm gonna just leave him off. Trevor Trey Lance, Trey Lance. You're unproven. Mm-hmm. We haven't even seen you on the field. All right, and. Who the I, heck is this guy? I have no clue. I'm going to just leave those, those off. Anybody. Yeah, this is my list. We got the elite here. Lamar we got the great QBs elite. here. Yes, he is. No, he's not. We got the great. How is he elite? How? MVP. The man has to carry that sorry roster on offense for years on end. This man is about to get paid top, probably the what most QB Wilson money out of doing? What was Russell Wilson doing with the Seahawks? Was he not carrying? He was, he was with that was bad old line. Good. Then he started sneaking up the joint the second half of the year. I oh, know, bro. You crazy, bro. Lamar Jackson not over Russell Wilson. <laughs> I like this Lamar. Is, okay, bro. Whatever, son. Well, that's your list. This, this is ridiculous. That's your this list. is my list. All right. It, what changes would you make? Um, I would take Lamar off. I would have Lamar in great. Yeah, I put him at great. I would I would have four QBs. I would have Rogers, Mahomes, Allen, and obviously Tom Brady. That would be my four. Okay. The great would be Russell Wilson, Lamar, Herbert, Dak, Burrow, Murray, and Stafford. That'd be great. Um, good, okay. good. 
Um, I would take Jameis off, put him at average. Really? Yes, I'll put really? him. I'll put him at average because um, I think Jameis that He's thirty for thirty. Average. That thirty for thirty, man. You can't forget that thirty for thirty. That he, he was hooping before he got hurt, though. Yeah, well, we still haven't seen a full season from James. He could have fell off a cliff. We, we, I needed to see that. So there's still some things I need to see from James before I say he's good. Okay, average. I think it's pretty solid. Bad. Yeah, I agree. Unproven. I agree. So the list, for the most part, just a few names that have changed, but. For the most part, I agree with pretty much everything. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be my list right there. Uh, no objections. Um, but, yeah, uh, there's another thing. There's another NBA tier list. I feel like the NBA tier list, that is where it gets really hot. And before before we do the NBA tier list, um, we have to uh, leave and come back because the time is about to come off. So, I think... This is a perfect time to do a little intermission. All right. Go ahead. So before I was cook, I was cook, I'm seeing people like like John Wall. Like, is he really a top 50 player nowadays? <laughs> like Christian Wood. Like <laughs> well, I think I think it's good enough. First, first of all, well, the way that we the way that we're gonna like set up this tier, I feel like we shouldn't set up the tier list from a number perspective. I feel like we need to sort of set it up like how we did with the NFL QB tier list and have it like uh, maybe like superstar or elite or something okay. like that and then have you know, the next one be... So I would say that would be superstar. The next one would be star. Yeah, that would be star. All-star? Really? You want to have an all-star? I feel like just call star, it star all star. It's the same. No, thing, it's not. Bro. No, it's not. It's a difference. Star and all star mm-hmm. are difference. All star, that'd be all star. Wait, an all star and a star is a different thing? Yes, absolutely. How? Yes. Kyle Lowry was an all star. Paul George is a star. There's a difference. It's like a different set of tier because. You can be so we just make, putting players that made the all star team but aren't stars in the in the in the all star tier. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Okay. That's why I said that's why I differentiate, differentiate, differentiate it. You know what I mean? All right. And then that would be like border. I would say that would be like borderline all star. All star, I guess. All star potential. I don't know. Borderline, sort of. You could say borderline. And then that would be... That'd be... I role say starter. Player? I say starter. Oh, uh, starter? Yeah. And role player. Role, role player. All right. Oh. Okay. Uh, we're just going to go in order. So, yeah, it makes it... Instead of searching and sifting, do we do... Anthony Davis. <laughs> Ooh, see, I we think Anthony lot. Davis is still a star. You think he's a superstar or is he a star? Just a star. Just a star. Okay. Gonna get a lot of flack for that one. Man, Anthony Davis ain't been a superstar since that bubble one. And man, I say. man. I say he's an all star. Yeah. He's all. He's, he's going to be a star, but he's an all star. He was in the West. He was in the West, so he couldn't make it. But if he was in the East, he would have made it for sure. DeAndre Ayton, I say he's an all. He's all star potential. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, he's all. Bam. Bam. Uh. All star potential. Did he make the All Star game? Yeah, but he averaged. What he? That's be. That's a given because he's in the East. True. All star, okay, because he actually made the team. Okay, Ben Simmons, we all know he's an all star. Yeah, he's an all star for sure. Devin Booker, that's a star. Devin Booker's a star. Bradley Beal's all star. Oh lord, (laughs) don't Brogdon. Malcolm Brogdon. He is. Really? Okay. He's like the upper tier of starter. Jimmy Butler's a star. 
we already know that. that she, she's more of a star than these two. Wow. <laughs> Disrespectful. Okay. CJ McCollum is an all star. Wait, has wait. He, he's is made he? the all star. No, team he has. Before. I say all star potential. Okay. Clint Capella is just a role player. No, he's a starter. He's a starter for sure. John Collins is a starter. Starter. Yeah. Chris Paul is a. Mm. 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 He's too old to be the star of the team, so I'll put an all star. Okay. Damian Lillard is a. Is Lillard a superstar? I think he is. You think he's a superstar? Yeah. Nah, he's a star. Okay. He's a star. Okay, I can't move that, but DeMar DeRozan is a... He's an all-star. D-Lo... Starter. Luca. Luca, we are... No question. Oh, 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 snap, accidentally. No question. First superstar on the board, and followed by another superstar, followed by De'Aaron Fox. He hasn't made a super all-star game, which is yeah, he's all-star potential. I can give you that all-star potential. And Vliet, he's made the all-star team, which but, is crazy. Uh, but thing with Van Vliet, though, I'm gonna put him in potential. That wasn't yeah, a real. That's that was, a Mickey yeah, Mouse all-star. Yeah, Giannis, I'm putting him first because he's the best in the world. Rudy Here's Gobert, all-star. yeah. I see he's yeah he's all awesome. Jeremy Grant starter starter yeah starter Harden uh, he's an all star oh, you got it come on you got to put him on I mean, it's fun to rag on Harden but he's still an all star at the end of the day. why are you gonna put him at all star wow he will he made the all star team no I'm I'm thinking you put him as a star but wow you gonna put him as oh really all-star? okay Harden he's not the guy no more though okay. Well, if he was the guy, he'd be a superstar, but. Okay, go ahead, man. Actually, I'll, put him, I'll put him towards the upper end of all-star. Go ahead. Gordon Hayward, he's Role just player. a starter. A Role starter. player. Role, a starter. Yeah, it, well, you're right. Is he better than Miles Bridges? I don't think so. No. Dang. A fall from grace. A few four, four, five years ago, he was like up here. Now he's down here. Yeah, Brandon a, Ingram, he's an all star. He's an all star for sure. Yeah. He's better than he's better than these people. Kyrie Irving, we all know he's an all star. He's I'll a star. Kyrie's a star. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Okay. Kyrie top 20. Jai's a ooh. Yeah, I'm going star. I'm not putting no superstar yet. Jalen Brown is a he's an all star. He's all star. He's he's better than Brad. So I'm putting him here. Jokic. Jokic superstar. We already know that. Yeah, easy money. Valanciunas is just a starter. Yeah, he's a starter, bro. I agree. Drew. All star potential. potential. Yeah. For sure. Kawhi all superstar. Right. I don't care. KD superstar. Who is that? That's Kemba. Oh, that's Kemba. Anywho, he shoot. He might be a role player. I don't even think he's, he's a role anymore. player. He's a role player. Yeah. Easy. Lamelo's all star potential. Wait, did he make the all star? He made it, but uh, I go all star. I go all star. Screw it. LeBron has... obviously is a superstar. Wait, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Karis LeVert. Role player. No, starter. Starter. I'll give you starter. Kyle Lowry. He's just a starter at this point, which is a shame. Chris Middleton. All star. Yeah. So. Mike Conley, just Role a starter. Player. A starter. Role player. He's falling. He's falling from grace. I mean, okay. You could put I think he'll star. start. He could start for you. D Mitch is an all star. MPJ, where's the injured category? <laughs> I guess he, he has all star potential. Let's say that Jamal Murray's all star potential. Oh, he's an all star. 
Yeah. Yeah, uh, so. he's an all star. Okay. Okay. All right. Oladipo's a role player in my opinion. Paul George is a star. Chris Stops just a starter in my opinion. I mean, he kind of has all star potential, he's but a at starter. this point, Julius Randle shouldn't be a starter, but he is. Yo. RJ Barrett, does he have all star potential? He does. Okay. He's that guy. I've seen him. Terry Rozier is just a starter. And his see, he's hit his ceiling. Sabonis, does he have all star potential? Yeah, I think yeah, so. he's he's made it too. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he did. Colin Sexton, he's a starter. SGA Yo, definitely has no... all star potential. You don't think Colin Sexton could start? He's a six man. He's better than Karis LeVert, if you ask me. But the way that – okay, go ahead. You were right. All right, go ahead. Siakam is an all-star. No. Did he make – he made the all-star. made it team. one time, but uh, – is he over SGA? Is he over Fox and them? I don't know. I feel like he's right in the all-star potential. Okay, that's fair. Marcus Smart. Role player. Well, he's a starter, I guess. Okay, let, I'm about to, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Steph Curry, obviously, superstar. Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't there yet, my boy. We'll put you, we'll put you behind Jimmy. All right, Tobias, he's just, he might as well be a role player at this point. He's, but he's a, starter. a starter, unfortunately. Cat is an all-star. Yusevich, no defense, but I guess he can start. John Wall, he can, he He's can a... start. Russ, <laughs> where's the liability problems? Role player, come on. Okay, man. let's not do that. Come on, let's not do that. He can start. Christian Wood is just a starter. Trey Young is a star, but he's on the lower end of my. Is Zach Levine a star or all star? All star, come on, now. let's not. Yeah, let's not. Worry. Zion, he's an all star. Oh yeah, all star. I give you all star. He still needs proving. Draymond, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's not disrespect Draymond. Let's not disrespect Draymond. Clay, all star, all star. Because the injuries. See, see, if he was like 2019 Clay, I would say star. But right now, he's an all star. And Mouse Turner is starter. a starter. Yeah, I'm a starter. All right. This is the list so far. Uh, We're pretty... Should we do it in order now or should we just leave it? No, I'll just leave it how it is. It's, it's, it's okay. This um, isn't in order, ladies, but if I, I'm going to do the superstar tier in order. How about that? Giannis, Luca, I think not. Nah, how many people we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight in a superstar. Interesting. No, that's solid. Well, if you add Anthony Davis. Anywho, <laughs> eight in a superstar, that sounds about right. The, the potential candidates out of this column, obviously, Anthony Davis, Jason Tatum, Damian Lillard. I don't care what you – I will, I don't know. Damian a superstar, in my opinion. He's like the only guy in that franchise. So Giannis, Luca, I got to give. No, nah, I think Luca's better than Jokic. I mean, B, Jokic is better you than think, You think Jokic is the third best player in the NBA? I ain't say that. I'm just, I'm just saying he's better than Embiid. Oh, okay. I thought I was about to say. Uh, KD like is definitely top three in the league. Even after that disaster class performance, Steph won a ring. <laughs> One, two, okay. Three, four. Uh, see, he, Embiid did win the score title. That's why I can't put him put LeBron. On. But I LeBron, think LeBron is better than both of these two. But just off of what they accomplished this season, I got to give them the edge over Braun. That's crazy. Okay. All right. This All right. isn't it's like – actually, hold on. 
if we go if I'm going by that criteria, I gotta put Steph over KD. Wait, you gonna, gonna put go Luca over Steph? Yeah. What 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 Luca done? What has Luca done? You know, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Here we go, man. What what you will put Luca over KD too? He went further than him. I should put Embiid over KD. Nah, you're if crazy. I'm going by that you're criteria. crazy. Your logic is ridiculous. This is this is crazy. I just said about what they accomplished over the season. Matter of okay. fact, you Jokic accomplished more than KD. But if I were to rank them based off talent and skill, I think mine would be it would be Giannis, Luca, KD, Jokic, Embiid, Steph O'Brien is interchangeable. And then Kawhi. This is not my list, people. This is not my list. It's not how I'm ranking the top eight. Actually, no, LeBron's still top five. But it's oh, which one do I put him in front of? I think Braun and Steph's still top five. So yeah, LeBron it would is be top three. Interesting. I'd say Giannis, Luca. Is Bron they hear the Bron at three does make sense? Bron, Steph, KD. Okay. All right. I'm, as much as I respect Jokic and Embiid, is like, would you really take these two over any of them? Any of the top four players I mentioned? I wouldn't. This is why we should have done it not in order. <laughs> Kept it not in order because we got to spark up some controversy. Oh God, you always do. But me, me personally, I would have Giannis, LeBron, KD, Steph, Luca. That would be, be LeBron's top, top two. Five. Yes, I do. I still think LeBron's top two. He almost did win the scoring title. Mm-hmm. He, so I guess he almost... that makes sense. And just is that a... it? Yep. I don't think anybody with that with that team would be able to overcome the things that LeBron had um, w- just had to deal with the entire year. I don't think I don't think Kevin Durant would have been able to overcome. Just look what the hell of happened with him and Kyrie. So that's why I'm like your your whole argument just goes out the window because if if you believe that Kevin Durant wouldn't have been able to overcome it, then there's no way that. There's no way that you could have Kevin Durant over LeBron. I think that LeBron is definitely still top three. He just, okay, yeah, he's older. He's 37, 38 years old. But at the end of the day, you give LeBron the pieces that those other guys have, I'm telling you, he's going to do just as much, if not more damage. You get LeBron the Nets roster, he's definitely going to play. He's definitely going to do a lot more damage than Kevin Durant. No question. The Nets, the Nets win the folded in the first round against the Celtics like that. <laughs> so I mean, I'm I'm going hypotheticals. I know we don't like doing hypotheticals, but if if you're just looking like logically from a basketball sense, you'll you'll know that you'll just know how LeBron goes, like what what LeBron is all about, and comparing him and Kevin Durant. I think, I think this top five years, this top five years, fair. <laughs> Hey man, that's you, bro. That's you. I'm not. Hey, this is not my top five. This is his. So what don't... what objections is there to have? You put Jokic over Kevin Durant. You put Luca over Kevin Durant. Like Luka come on, dragged man. his team to the Western Conference Finals. He had a good team. In the was West. be honest, was Luca's team better than than the Nets? Be a hundred. They had better chemistry. They played defense. They had a coach that knew what he was doing. Yeah. Now, if you want to go off a of straight talent, obviously they had Kyrie. Yeah, but there's more to it than just straight talent. You have to have chemistry. You have to have good coaching. You have to have the right pieces around you. And the Nets were actually pretty old, just like the Lakers. So People people forget that yo the Nets were kind of old. Like they had Blake Griffin playing minutes. They had Lamarck and Aldridge playing minutes. Dudes was Andre Drummond was playing minutes, and you saw what he was doing with the Lakers on defense. So 
the Nets, if you just, yeah, name brand, okay, but. Who had a better playoff performance, Jokic or KD? Mm. This shouldn't even be a thought. A question obviously, you have obviously about. Jokic. Obviously, Jokic. Obviously, Jokic. This is a what, if honestly, if this was a what have you done for me lately, then Steph LeBron would be, wouldn't even Steph, be top five. If, if what have you done with me lately, then Steph will be two, Luke will be three. And um, I'll probably have Jokic at four, maybe. But we're not just doing that off of the playoffs. I got to give respect off the uh, back-to-back MVP. That's why I got him over KD. That's, like, literally, like, the only reason I got him over KD. You're insane. And the fact he put up a – he had a historic season. You're insane, but carry on. We could – That's about it. Yeah, carry on. We could do something else. Uh, I'm not going to go back and forth with you on this. Um, I was wondering if we could sort of analyze sort of the young QBs, the QBs that still have a lot to prove. So like Tua, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Justin. Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, um, who else? The what's a young QB? Is is that all? Is that all the? I guess Kenny Pickett, but uh, I don't know. I guess Kenny Pickett as well, but I, I doubt he'll get any PT. So yeah, those pretty much are the young QBs that are going to be starting, going to be getting a lot of playing. Mac Jones, time. Mac Jones as well. That's a good. You said that. Tua. Yeah, I said Tua. So um, I want to just talk about what what do you want to see from each of those QBs? Like, what do you want to see them improve on this coming season? So let's start off with Zach Wilson. What do you want to see Zach Wilson improve on the Jets? I want him to like, I just want him to get, you know, more, I want all of the QBs to get him like more comfortable you know, with the game speed in the NFL and stuff, so they make better decisions. It's pretty much decision-making, really. I think most of them got the talent to be good. It's just, like, decision-making, like, the nuanced things of the QB position that they all need to get a knock on. Like, you know, chemistry with the receivers. Oh, when in this certain situation, what's the best throw to make? You know, things like that. I think I think majority of them have the talent to be, like, good QBs. It's just, you know, the small things that they need to progress in. So what so what specifically you want to see Zach Wilson improving? Because I know one thing when it came to him last year is he would make a lot of mistakes. Be like a lot of like against the Patriots, for example. He might have what he threw like five interceptions, like four in the first half, I think it was. So he was atrocious. So would you say that for Zach Wilson, just limiting the mistakes um, when you're scram- understanding when to when it's appropriate to scramble out of the pocket, when when um, when to not do too much, you know? Because I felt like he was trying to do too much when the play was pretty much dead, like you know, live to see another day per se. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, that comes with situational awareness and stuff like that. And like think, knowing and being more experienced. I think that another is. thing, I think another thing is yes, they he didn't have a whole lot of talent. So you could say that as well. I think that's one of the things that um Zach Wilson was dealing with. He didn't have a good offensive line. He didn't have top receivers in his position. What do you have? Um that uh, receiver that came from the Colts. That's I mean, not the Colts, the um, the Titans. I forgot his name. Corey Davis. Yeah, Corey Davis. Yeah, who I think he may have like. It's crazy that he was in the top 100 one year over Terry McLaurin. I'm not even gonna go there, but that's that's just the same. But yeah, um, they had Corey. That's all he really had was Corey Davis. Yeah, Corey all Davis, that. Jameson Crowder, I think. Yeah, Jameson Crowder. Yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, Elijah Moore. Yeah, oh yeah, he, he did have a lot. More. He did have a lot of more. But yeah, that's pretty much you know those guys are they are all right. I mean they be they're pretty much like number threes, they're like the number three receiver really in a in a um you know in a regular receiving core. So it's all he really had to work with, and no no good tight end, no good offensive line, 
running backs were pretty much average. Um, they had one running back. Uh, I think he showed a little bit of bright spots, but just overall, wasn't really much to work with. But yeah, again, you know, just understanding. They got a they, they got a um, good running back and a good receiver in the draft. So hopefully that'll help. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much Zach Wilson. We, we, what about uh Trevor Lawrence? What do you want to see from Trevor Lawrence? His he was screwed from the jump because he had Urban Meyer as his coach. So I just want to see what he'd look like with a new coach, new system. I want him to like, I want him to, you know, I, I think he showed it a little bit, like especially towards the end of the season when he beat they beat the coach. It was the coach they beat, I think, to knock them out the playoff contention. You know, I want I want to see the Trevor Trevor Lawrence we saw at Clemson. That the, like I want him to be the guy. The arm strength. It seemed like arm talent. Yeah, I feel like he's been he's he's been playing more conservative. Like I want to see Trevor Lawrence on the field. I know it was his rookie. He wanted to make sure he was doing the right things, but I, I want to see the dog. Well, he was well. He was trying to do the right things, but it, it still didn't work because yeah. I think he had more interceptions than touchdowns. It yeah, was that I, just need, I just need him to get get his, his his swagger back that's what i want to see yeah i, I want to see his arm strength he showed it a little bit i believe it was thursday night football against the um was it the Bengals? it might have been the Bengals where he was showing sort of that arm strength and people were like oh my god that's the trevor lawrence from college yeah i want to see his arm strength man i want to see that arm talent people were compl- proclaiming you as the most talented qb in the last 20 years and stuff like uh like the really much the one of the most yeah the one most talented qbs ever and so i want to see that trevor lawrence because a lot of scouts have been saying he has no holes in his game like he's the perfect prototype like he's 6'6 230 can run a 4'6 you know what i'm saying can do everything you need so i need to see that i need to see that talent on the field because um if he can't improve it will definitely be one of the biggest busts in nfl history just with all the all the hype all the expectations i need to see that arm strength i need to see that arm talent and um that's what i'm really looking for i need to see those spectacular throws from trevor lawrence like we saw in clemson that's fair uh so what about justin fields what do you need to see from justin Fields? i need justin Fields to uh stop cut down on the turnovers and I need him to it's hard to trust your line when players are in the backfield as soon as the ball snaps but I need him to stop being so like antsy and quick to try to escape the pocket and and make something happen I need him to settle down into the pocket a little more and show more poison and being more calm so we still the turnovers can cut down yeah, I agree with you on that one. They're getting like... better rhythm with his receivers. But them receivers, good grief. They have the worst receiver core in the league. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. bad. Darnell yeah. Moon is really the only good guy on that roster. Yeah, you, I don't even think – I can't really name anybody besides Darnell Mooney on the receiving core. That's just – that just lets you know how bad it is right now. And the tight end, like, all they really have is those two running backs. And those two running backs are <laughs> – I mean, they're all oh, they're okay, but it's not like it's not like they're the Browns where they have uh where they have Nick Chubb and um Kareem Hunt. It's not like that, and so exactly. yeah. so yeah, I would say yeah, I agree with you on that. He needs to um keep his composure. Um, same with Zach Wilson, you know, uh, just understand when you know live another day. You know, not try to do too much. Uh, if um, the pass rush is coming. It's okay to take the sack. It's it's okay. You don't have to or just throw the ball away. Who yeah, cares about completion percentage? It's it's okay. Like you're a young guy, you don't have a whole lot of help. You have to um protect yourself at the end of the day, especially when you don't have the greatest of old line. So I would say keep your composure, protect yourself, live for another day. Um make sure that you're not staring at one receiver. Go through your progressions as the scouts have been saying, oh, you know, he, he stares at the receiver. Now, that's a bit uh, – I wouldn't say it's a lie, but it's sort of exaggerated because I've seen him in a lot of spots where he actually does go through his progressions, but there are times where he does just stare down at one receiver. So 
I would say do a better job at going through his progressions. Um, I've seen him throw the ball. Like I've seen his arm talent. He has a really good arm. It's not like Trevor Lawrence where he just is conservative a lot of times. Like, no, I've seen Trevor Lawrence sling the football to Darnell Mooney a lot of times. I need to see more of that. You mean Justin Fields? Yeah, Justin Fields. Yeah, I'm I'm just comparing the two. So um, I need to see more of that. And I think from yeah i want to see like some read option with justin fields but that's more like the coaching so he can't really control that that much but yeah that's pretty much what i want to see uh what do you want to see from mac jones mac jones had a pretty uh pretty strong rookie campaign so i just want to see him get more to that leader role you know and just really become the leader of the locker room and the team and stuff like that and also uh he's more athletic than he looks so if he has the opportunity to scramble i think he should take it because he's not like but he's not like brady slow like he's he's his his, he can move around like aaron Rodgers. as i say that he got the speed like Aaron Rodgers. so i just need i want to see him you know try to extend more plays outside the pocket you know get maybe get a first down with your legs stuff like that i think he has the arm talent but you know I think I think Zach will um, not Zach uh <laughs> Mac Jones he he makes the right play. I give you that. But I feel like he doesn't take Sometimes he chance. makes yeah, yeah. He sometimes he makes the right play too many times. He he he's too conservative. He takes too much, you know, takes the check down, it'll take like the five yard route, maybe ten yard route, but he doesn't take the thirty to forty yard route that can get you that touchdown and get you close to position to get a touchdown. So I think I want to see more of those splash plays from Zach, from um, Mac Jones, because I think that's what he's really missing a lot. And then also you said the scrambling. I agree with you. Um, Patriots, they have the pieces. Well, I wouldn't say they have the greatest. They they don't have the greatest, but they have good enough pieces where he can like sort of uh, make do with what he can sort of get. Right. And he, it's not like a situation like with the Jags or the um, or with the Bears where there's no like pieces at all, really. I mean, Jags, I guess a little bit, but for the most part, the Bears they don't have no pieces. The Patriots, they got they have some pieces. They have an O line. They have they have that system that works. So I want to see just uh, Mac Jones taking more risk, trampling a little bit, extending some plays. Um, instead of just staying in the pocket all the time. Um, I would say the last young QB, well, there's Trey Lance. Ah, Trey Absolutely. Lance, we haven't really seen much from Trey Lance, so can we really say what we expect from him? All I can really say is Trey Lance, I want to see some of the things that you did in college, which is the scrambling, the read option, the um, the ability to throw on the run. I just want to see all those things that I saw in college with um what was it north dakota state that's really why i, I just want to see what about you I don't, i'm not too well versed on trey lance so i'm not sure you haven't, seen his, well, you haven't seen his college tape no. okay all right we'll um skip trey lance what about the last qb tour what do you want to see from tour i don't i need him to like push the ball down the field more because like it's too many check downs like I know the completion percentage numbers look pretty but look at the depth of target and stuff like that and I need him I just need him to go, try to deep ball out more because there's a lot of things about we can't throw deep I think he can but he just doesn't do it as often like I seen a play he had like 50 the ball was 50 yards in the air so I'm, I'm sure he can do it he just doesn't take the risk like that so i just need him to see get more comfortable with his weapons he got he got he got weapons now he got tyreek Jalen waddle arguably the best weapons in the nfl i don't think there's a better team like i like the chiefs but you have Jalen waddle um you have mike gasecki you have tyreek hill and then the running backs aren't nothing to sneeze either I mean, Raheem, was it Raheem Mostert? Raheem and, Mostert and Chase and, uh, Edmonds. Chase Edmonds? Come on now. Come on now. That's that's pretty good. I don't think yeah, there's – is there another team that has a better offensive depth? The Bengals. 
okay, they you got yeah, Bengals are up there, yeah, okay, but they're top, but the Dolphins are top five. Like, there's no question about it. There's not, they're top five. Like, you have those. So, for me, with Tua, yeah, he has to push the ball down the field a lot. But I think his decision making, his decision making. That that interception he threw against the uh, Jags, I think we played in my mind. That was insane. His decision making, I would say, like when I'm not concerned when his when it comes to his decision making, five to fifteen yards, but when it goes to like twenty, thirty, forty, it just seems like he doesn't know what he's doing. It just seems like he wants to take a risk, but when he tries to take the risk, it's not the, it's not to his favor. Like it just seems like he it just seems like he's just trying too hard, but it just doesn't come natural to him. I want to see Tua just do a better job at one, going through his progressions, um, being more accurate when it comes to those 20 plus yard throws, and also improving when it comes to his scrambling ability as well. Because I be seeing the offensive line, it's gonna be in shambles sometimes. And when they're when the offensive line is in shambles, man, he just he's just he just freezes. Like he's he's lost. It's like when things aren't going his way, when things are chaotic, he just looks a, like a shell of him. He looks like a disaster. So keep your composure when things aren't going right. And just do a better job when it comes to throwing the football 20 plus yards down the field. That's all I'm asking because them check down the 15 yards, the defenses, the defensive coordinators know, they know what you want to do. And you have to adjust. You just have to adjust and stop being predictable. So yeah, that's what I want to see from Tua. Um uh I think that's good for the for the um the young QBs. When we come back, we will talk about the, I would say. The last topic we could talk about since the, since the season is about to start, I want to analyze divisions. And for this okay. week, for this week, we'll analyze the NFC East since you're winning the Cowboys and stuff, and just what we expect, what we want to see from um, each team and stuff like that. We're going to be objective. There's no bias here, you know. So. Yeah, when we come back, we'll um, analyze that. All right, so we are going to be analyzing the NFC East, and let's start the Cowboys. Now, let's be objective. Let's be objective. I'm going to be objective. I know I'm not the biggest Cowboys lover, and he's the biggest Cowboys lover. But uh, What made you think I wouldn't be objective? Anywho, um, yeah, so Cowboys, what do you want to see? Like, let's say this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go players. What players do you, like, want to see, like, just get better? Like, what do you want to see, let's say Dak or Zeke or somebody? Who do you want to see, like, just get better? I would love to see Dak get better because it helps my agenda. But um, What's obviously I want – um, with Dak – he, man, it's my real issue with Dak. Sometimes it's like he does boneheaded stuff, and I'm just like, but why though? It's sometimes like he just needs to win like the games against the tougher competition. That's pretty much it. And yeah, so I like that accuracy. I think he's fine. Um, his decision making is solid for the most part. He doesn't commit too many mistakes. He has only ten interceptions to thirty-seven touchdowns. So sometimes, oh, I do wish he would run more because there's been plenty of times I'm like, run. Like I think I think they was being cautious with him last season though because of the ankle injury. So yeah, I just needed to see run more, beat the beat the the teams that are actually good in the league, and yeah, that's about it. Who else do you want to see sort of uh, improve? I want to see Diggs improve. I want him to become more of a a coverage guy instead of a just get picks guy. I want him to, like, 
I want him to clamp up more wide receiver ones. I want him to stop gambling as much. I want him to more like I just want him to be more of a lockdown corner instead of a ball hawk or something like that. Mm. Also want I want to see C D really step into that number one wide receiver role, which I think he can do. He has the talent and he has the mentality to do it. So I just need to see him get the opportunities from Kellen Moore to get the ball and be the true number one guy. I also want to see outside of, I want to see Kellen Moore step it up when it comes to play calling and running a real scheme. I need to see a scheme, not a bunch of plays that you can just go to. I need a scheme. I need something, an identity. The Cowboys haven't had a, an identity since what Jason Garrett left. And that was that identity was just run the ball. So I need to see an actual scheme put in place and ways to get the playmakers, the ball in their hands. And on the defense, and then, I mean, uh, I don't think they got, I want to see the D law get back to his former self. Not really, it was only a couple years ago, but yeah, I want him to get back into that. Is healthy. I want to see it's just other besides health. I mean, I just knew everyone just needs to be healthy and just play their Zeke? role well. What about Zeke? You ain't talk about Zeke, Zeke. Was, Zeke was playing well until he got hurt, so that's what I'm just saying. Besides health, I mean, ain't really much Zeke can really do. He's a running back, so was he not stat padding the, the, the end of the year? I mean, yeah, but as Zeke, I mean, weren't, weren't you complaining about Zeke saying that he falling off? Yeah, I, I think swear, Tony Pollard needs more touches, but I'd rather have a two back system than a one back system, personally. Okay, all right, that's fair. Um, for me, the Cowboys being objective, I definitely need to see Dak uh play better in the bright lights against the best teams because I just feel like um that's one of the things that has sort of uh <sighs> I would say when it comes to like people sort of respecting Dak more, I think that's one of the reasons why people haven't given him his flowers as much is because he beats up on the bad teams. But when it comes to like really good teams, he doesn't, he doesn't show up as well. So he needs to, he needs to get over the hump against the really good teams, like the bucks, like the, um, like the Packers, like the like the 49ers um like the rams you know those type of teams if people want to give him his respect because right now it is what it is so i feel like yeah dak um trayvon diggs uh i sort of agree with what you're saying i need to see him be better when it comes to coverage as well uh man to man specifically i would love to see him better in that area uh, instead of just taking risk when it comes to INTs because eventually I think if you're just a ball hawk it's going to end up catching up to you just look at Marcus Peters Marcus Peters he's he's solid but eventually he got to the point where he was getting cooked there was a lot of times where he was just getting cooked so I think just being a ball hawk being one dimensional will eventually um catch up to you the league will catch up to you and you're just going to get exposed so Trayvon Diggs definitely need to do better in man coverage um and uh I think everybody else Zeke he pretty much is what he's going to be I don't I don't really see him sort of improving I think he's just a um he's a lost cause at this point because of his injuries because he's a running back Tony Pollard, I feel like he needs to just be healthy. That's really what it is. I think he's productive. Tony Pollard is healthy. He just doesn't get put into the game, and that's because of Kelly and Moore. I swear, people be like, oh, Tony Pollard, he just be banged up all the time. Well, no. People say, the only thing I hear people say about Tony Pollard is he can't be a number one running back because he doesn't get a lot of touches. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Okay. Well, um, okay, okay. I see what you're saying there, but uh, I just think overall, um, Tony Pollard, yeah, just be productive, just be who he is, be more consistent, and um, he just needs more opportunity, and that's on Killing Moore's part and the coaches' staff. Yeah, and um, CD Lamb, I need to see consistency. I need to see the hands, man. The hands. He was dropping passes last year. I need, I need him to be. Uh, better when it comes to uh, catching the football uh, as well. So 
Uh, C.D. Lamb, he has the potential. He was a top, what was he, top 15, top 17 pick. So he 17. has, yeah, so he has potential, like, especially last year. He made the Pro Bowl. He had, like, what, 1,200 yards, I believe it was. 1,100. Yeah, I, I don't know. How many touchdowns? Did he have a lot of touchdowns last year? I don't think he had a whole I think lot. He had, he had, like, I want to say six, six to eight, something. Uh, I guess, I guess the number two. But, yeah, I just need to see the consistency, um, the ability to catch the football a lot better. And, yeah, I think that's really what it is. Um, I think that's it for the Cowboys. I really can't think of anybody else that comes to mind. Um, I, need, I just need the offensive line as a unit to just block. Oh, yeah. It also, the mistakes eliminate a lot of the penalties. I think one of the things that killed you guys was the penalties. Yes, penalties. Yeah. Yeah, you penalties. Right. Yeah, defense, offense. That was just that was just atrocious. Against the 49ers specifically, it really showed itself. So yeah, eliminate the penalties. But um so the next, so the next team, let's go to uh, Philly. Let's go to Eagles. I know you hate. I know you hate the Eagles, but uh, being objective here, um, what would you what what would you like to see from like I, I, some players specifically? I don't want to see anything good from them players personally, but let's just for the sake of being football guy, I guess. Uh, I would like to see Jalen Hurts be a better QB. And I just see it's so hard because like they're the top op at this point, so it's hard to like. Tell me, I want them to see something good from them. I ain't gonna lie, I'm setting you up. You wearing the Cowboys gear and everything. Yeah, like, about Taylor. <laughs> hey, that's kind of hey, that's that's low key funny. Like, um, what what specifically you want to see from Jalen Hurts? He just needs to make better decisions in. His act, he, sometimes he puts it on the money, sometimes just to like, who exactly were you throwing to? So it is that point. So, like, accuracy and decision making is pretty much it. Mm. What about um, receivers? What about the receiving core? Who, who on the receiver? Uh, I think the receiver core is on the really solid. So, AJ Brown just gonna have to adjust to the scheme and the offense and stuff. But uh, Devonta Smith. I need him to be – I know he's technically not the number one now anymore, but I still want him to act like he's the number one because you were the top guy coming out of college mm-hmm. in your draft class besides Jamar Chase. But still, like, I need you to, like, demand the ball sometime. Gotcha, it's like gotcha. you're, you're good enough to be a number one receiver. You just got to step into that role. Do you, do you feel like he needs to do a better job in terms of like winning his matchup? Do you feel like I think feel- he's pretty good one on one? It's just I don't know if it's the route tree they got him running that's not helping his case or what. Like if you see the film, he gets open. It's just Jalen Hurts doesn't hit him all the time. Okay, okay. Um, I feel like uh, I'm not gonna really talk about Miles. San- Miles Sanders is who he is. I don't think he's gonna get better. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think the Eagles. That's pretty much. So, what about the Giants? What do... oh, Giants? The Giants need Jesus and oh. all twelve of the disciples oh, at this my... point. Oh my God, the Giants. Okay, what what players on the Giants would you want to see sort of um, improve? Oh my gosh, none of them. But seriously, though, <laughs> R. Um, Kelly. You sound like R. Kelly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. I guess Daniel Jones. I mean, I don't know, man. What what do, what do they really have over there in New York? You have Saquon, Daniel Saquon, Jones, Saquon, Daniel Jones. Um, they had that that um pass rusher that they drafted. Uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Kayvon Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau. Yep. Oh, 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 the rooks. Oh, yeah, I want to see the rooks perform well. But as far as the players that's been on the roster, I mean. They are who they are at this point. The Giants are just a dumpster fire. What about Saquon, man? What, what you want to see from Saquon? The man just needs to stay on the field and not get hurt and get more than one rushing yard in a, in a single game. What about Daniel Jones, man? 
Daniel Jones. Jones. I think, man, they always oh, wait till Daniel Jones. I think he is who he is at this point. Yeah, he's a good athlete, but a good quarterback has yet to be seen. So I guess I just need him to make better throws, I guess. <laughs> You, you, you're hilarious. Okay, um, for me, Saquon, yeah, I agree. Uh, just stay healthy. I think that uh, his running ability, man, he needs to be more disciplined. He needs to be more disciplined, not try to take too many chances. I get your rookie season. You know, you you ran the ball. You, what? I don't know. I don't know how many touchdowns he had, but he was spectacular his rookie season. But then after that, he just fell off a cliff. You know, and he hasn't been the same. So stay healthy. Uh. Just be more disciplined when you're running football, finding those creases. If it's just taking what the defense gives you, you know, instead of just trying to create something from nothing. You know, I get it. Your offensive line is not the greatest, but sometimes you just got to go with what you have. And so, yeah, Saquon, just one more to see from you. Uh, do a better job blocking. Ben Jones needs all the help he can get. Be a better blocker for him. Uh, be a better receiver for him as well. Just be multi dimensional, man. Now, I could say that's. Part of that is on coaching, so I can't really um, blame most of that on you, but uh, try to do your part as well because um, Daniel Jones is going to need all the help he can get because um, this is going to be his final – probably going to be his final year starting. So, yeah, Daniel Jones, lost cause, uh, pretty – I remember they comparing him to Eli and all this other stuff. I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all except the mannerisms. So – yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the Washington Commanders. Now I know you despise them the most. It's 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 the stain. It's just something about the Commanders that you just don't like. My disdain is starting to become pity at this point. <laughs> it's it's getting sad. Um, what players do you want to see like just improve from the Commanders? Um, improve. <laughs> um, Chase Young, since he's Chase. from the hometown, so yeah, I want to see Chase. I, I heard, I heard he's going to be missing the start of the season because of yeah. that ACL. I'm like, dang, what's up with these ACL injuries? See, my uh, Cam Akers came back from an Achilles injury faster than these ACL injuries that people coming back from. Yeah, ACL is supposed to be um. Achilles is supposed to be worse than the ACL. So yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what's been going on. Like Gallup, he ain't going to be ready until probably close to October or or October or November. So, yeah, these ACL injuries is very weird. But, yeah, I also, I mean, I want to see how that Jahan Dotson is going to perform. Terry McLuhan is cool. I, he should be better. He gets, he gets a QB that can throw the ball semi-decent, so that's a positive. Okay. Yeah, I think, see, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on the Commanders, though. I'm keeping my eye on them. They seem like one of the – the Commanders are the team. It's like you see them on a roster, seeing them on a schedule, and, oh, yeah, this is a dub, but it, it could be a trap game. That's how <laughs> I feel about them. Yeah, I can't be, can't be too confident going they, against them. They're unpredictable. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're All like right. a wild, wild animal. No Carson Wentz? No, nah, Carson Wentz is who he is. He's going to put up decent numbers in the regular season, but if you need a game to get into the playoffs or win a playoff game, he's he's cooked food. There's no point. So he's Kirk Cousins, basically. Kirk Cousins is better than him, but he's the worst version of Kirk Cousins. Okay, so for me, the commanders, I want to see Jahad Doxon. I want to see that potential. They said he was the best. He had the best hands in the draft. So I need to see that from Jahan Dotson. Just not against – and all. And for the record, I want them to do all of these things except against the Cowboys. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, so I want to see that from Jahan Dotson. I want to see that um, uh, catching ability. And for Terry McLaurin, I want to see him just – improve um just be more dominant i see you know he has the potential but i just think that like i just hearing what some of the people saying about him saying that oh he's really good and all this other stuff i need to see more of it i need to see more consistency from him i need to see him get in the end zone more 
that's another thing because I think that one of the reasons why um NFL like NFL top 100 or um they come out with these rankings and they have like Terry McLaurin lower than we expect him I think one of the things is the touchdowns like he doesn't get a whole lot of touchdowns now granted part of that is because it's QB so you could say that's probably one of the reasons but another time he does tend to not show up sometimes like against you always point out Trayvon Diggs what he be doing against Trayvon Diggs so that's one of the things so I just need to see um Terry McLaurin just be more consistent just get better become the number one receiver that people believe he can be right because he has the potential but it's just him and DK Metcalf, they're just, you know, they're just inconsistent. They're just inconsistent. Um, Carson Wentz, limit the mistakes. Um, yeah, limit the mistakes. Just do a better job being a quarterback. <laughs> I know that's simple. I know I know. you're like, what do you mean by that? I'm talking about – I don't 100% know what you mean. Go, go through your progressions, um, not trying to do too much. Like, I feel like – he just does way too much. Like um, Skip Bayless, he always talks about um, calls Carson Wentz, but he spells Wentz um, differently. I, he's like I W I N C. I went. Yeah, I went. He winces every time. You know what I'm saying? He plays the Cowboys. That's what he does. I need to stop saying that from him. Stop being so nervous. You know, keep your composure. Be calm. It's okay. Like you're six. You're this talented. You have a strong arm. Like display that. Display that strong arm, but don't put your team in a bad predicament. You can display all your talent, but don't do too much, man. You need to see that from Carson Wentz. We've um, been saying that for the past three years. When is yeah. it really going to happen? That's a, that's a good point. Um, for uh, Chase Young, just get healthy. Uh, I, I need to see more consistency from him as well. Uh, that That rookie of the year, I don't know if that got to him or not, but like, as a isn't he supposed to be like this pass rusher or something like that? But I didn't see a whole lot of sacks from this guy. Like, sure, yeah, he got the iron. Yeah, he was he was getting cooked. He was getting clamped up last year. He got the iron. I mean, the rookie year, he got the ints. He got the forced fumble. It's funny. His rookie of the year. Compare his rookie of the year numbers to Michael Parsons as a half. Day. Uh, a, a part-time pass rusher. It's like, yikes. Does this dude really deserve it? It's, it's laughable. It's laughable. Uh, but, yeah, you, you look at Chase Young, he's supposed to be – they were saying that, oh, yeah, he's more talented than Joey Bosa and Nick Bosa. I don't see it. I don't see it. Like That was insane. Yeah, I don't see it. Like, I don't see the production. So, I need to see the Chase Young, the number two overall pick, Chase Young, that – these scouts, these NFL evaluators proclaim this man to be. And that is a top tier pass rusher. I need to see the double digit sacks. I need to see the forced fumbles and the what 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 did you say? What did you value more than sacks? Pressures. 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 Yeah. I need to see those pressures going up, man. I need to see the quarterback um tap dancing, scared, out of balance. Yeah. I've watched a lot of com- well, commanders, you know, the football, so whatever the heck you want to call it. Seen a lot of games, and I was thinking, I was like, where is Chase Young at? And I've been saying, I've seen, I was like, oh, that's a bad thing. You should never have to ask where the top pass rusher on the team is. I think against the Chiefs, though, I remember I went to go watch the Chiefs. He did he did play pretty well against the Chiefs. I'll say that much. Uh, even though Patrick Mahomes, you know, at that time he was – bit shaky but he did play pretty well but that's the only game I could think of where I was like oh, oh there's Chase Young Chase Young is popping you know he's he's doing something but every other game it's like I can't find you so yeah I need Chase Young to really um prove that his number two pick is valid and not a, a bust but yeah um I think that'll do it for the NFC East uh I think that'll do it for the podcast um you have any final words or you have anything that you do you want to do say? who do you think will win the division i'm not going to do uh, that. nah i'm not going to do i we'll okay. save that we'll save that um i'll say close to the season for uh, labor day the week before labor day we'll sort of give our um nfl predictions right our, um who will win the division who will win the super bowl you know who will go to playoffs and all that but for right now i just wanted to like just analyze sort of the divisions and all this other stuff so we did the nfc east right now we'll do 
maybe one or two in the NFC next week, and then we'll just keep going down the line until um, the start of the season. It's still um, until like maybe before Labor Day, where we'll give our um, ultimate like predictions of who will win the division and all this other stuff. So we will also be we will also be before the season. We'll probably do it the. We'll probably do it the week before the first game of the season. We're, we're going to do predictions week in and week out, you know, just this for fun. We're going to predict the games and tally up the whoever's right more at the end of the season. I don't know if there's any bet. Should we do a bet? Should we do a bet on that? If whoever has the most correct predictions, mm. should we do that? A bet or something like that? Well, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that um, when we're doing our predictions down the road okay. um, later in the month. So later in August. So we'll 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 okay. sort of dive into that a little bit later. But uh, that sounds interesting. I um think um yeah we'll do that we'll do that later. But uh, yeah, I think um make sure to follow. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, follow the socials. Uh, comment down below. Like the video. Um, we definitely uh, appreciate if you guys do that. Um, and also, um, just stay tuned. We're going to be posting more content, um, posting more um, beyond sports. You know, watch those videos as well. It's definitely entertaining. Um, we post Instagram, post Twitter, you know, all that sort of stuff. But thank you guys for watching, and we will see you guys later. Yep. All I put my life in these sentences. Fucking right, it's either that or life sentences. I'm relatives with Benjamin. I used to give a fuck about my luck when I was innocent. Now, what the fuck is up? I'm at your neck like a penalty.